A wife wants to extract. How do I say it? Swimmers from her deceased husband so she can have a child without him. Now, I am vehemently against this, but I will recognize that this woman has endured immeasurable grief. I understand why she wants to do this, but I still don't agree with the fact that a person should be allowed to do this, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to break down the story for you. We're going to use proper terminology. for So heads up for parents if you don't want your kids to know proper terminology, okay? So a 62-year-old grieving widow. There's a lot to chew on here. There, it's layered, okay? Okay. A 62-year-old grieving widow in Australia has won the right to extract sperm from her dead husband. Whoa. So the couple who had been married for 39 years sadly lost their two adult children in separate accidents. Oh, God. I know. It's, oh. it's heartbreaking. It really is. Um, and this move is her final attempt to have a child with her husband, whom she was trying to conceive with when he suddenly died at 61 at their home. So the day after he died... Um, the woman who currently remains unnamed due to legal reasons, she had an urgent hearing in front of the Supreme Court and they granted the woman permission to have a spermatozoa tissue removed from her late husband. So she got it, right? His body had been stored at a morgue in Perth. And during the hearing, she argued that for years, she and her, dis- her husband had regularly discussed having another child after their firstborn a 30-year-old son died in a car accident, and then their second child um, drowned in a f- on a fishing trip. Like, again, <sighs> it's just tragic. Like, it's wow. horrible. So this 62-year-old woman was told by a fertility expert that she's past the age of having a child. However, her husband's sperm, still good to go. And doctors determined that he was a suitable candidate for IVF, in vitro fertilization, so they could implant... Um, get a donor egg, use his sperm, and implant it in a surrogate. And that's what they were, you know, planning to do. So now despite winning her case and the fact that she was able to get her her husband's gunk, um, she now has to face another legal battle and that is trying to use her husband's sperm to have a baby because he's no longer here to give consent. Oh my God. So the whole thing, again, very layered. There's a lot of tragedy and I mean, it is it is heartbreaking. And I'm I'm you know, I can't, I don't even want to put myself in her shoes because I couldn't fathom losing both your children and then losing your husband. Like that's just it's heart wrenching and heartbreaking. But to in any circumstance, when the person is deceased and they can't give permission, like if this was in the will, by all means, um, I. Dude, you can't like you can't go in there snagging stuff, you know, snagging stuff without without consent. I mean, like Mo, put yourself in this position, mm-hmm. and it's your wife, and you want to go in there and extract eggs to have a baby with her post mortem. Well, I'm I'm torn because if it's that way, I'm not doing it. I, if I'm not doing it to her, to mm-hmm. my wife, like that. It doesn't feel right, regardless of the circumstances. It really just doesn't feel right. And he's, oh, she's not here to help raise the child. Right. I, but if I'm the guy, if I'm the deceased, and these are the circumstances with all of the tra- tragedy involved, I wouldn't be mad. I, You'd be I, looking I, like your ghostly spirit would be over there like, get your gunk, girl. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> do what you gotta do. Get that turkey baster. I really would. <laughs> To me, I don't understand how this is any different than you obtaining sperm via sperm donor. So don't donor. So if she has the right to have the sperm, I don't understand why she doesn't have the right to do whatever she wants with it. Well, it, he has to consent for his sperm to be used because it's got to be consensual, his body, his choice kind of thing. So when you go get a sperm donor, these men have donated their sperm, signed paperwork, like they're they are handing it over for anybody to use. You know, he he technically did not do that. For me, it's because they had been trying and yeah. they were going to go down this route. You know, like, that is the husband's wish anyway. The only difference is he's not in the picture. So I'm like, have at it. If it makes her happy, he's not going to be an, any, like, none the wiser. He was already in it to win it. Now, if you're talking about, he said he didn't want more children at all, like mm-hmm. he was done. I think that would be a different story because then it's like, 
while he was alive, he already implied he was consenting to having another baby. And if he had said no, then you're going against his wishes. But let the woman have the little swimmers. Okay, so thinking about her, but now let's think about the child. Is that fair to the child? Um, She's 62. Dad is not in the picture. Here's my thing. By the time this court case is even done, I don't even think a pregnancy is a viable option. And I hate saying that because it breaks my heart for her. Because I, if I was in her position and this is how I was grieving, I, I can't say that I wouldn't do the same thing. But yeah. I, I don't even think that this is even going to happen, if I'm honest with you. She's going to be 63, 64 by the time she maybe miraculously gets pregnant. And then oh, if no, she, they're, she, they're doing a surrogate. Oh, a surrogate. Yeah. No, she can't carry... They're going to use like it, it would be it would just be her husband's sperm and they they were trying to find a surrogate. But does she have viable eggs that she can use? I don't think so. They'd probably have to use a donor egg. Gotcha. And what's interesting, though, is because if she's 62, like let's say she had that baby or the surrogate had it now, the kid would be 18 when she turns 80. So for me, I'm like, you got to make sure that your life is going to last long enough to mm-hmm. take care of a child while they're under the age of 18, especially if there's no other family that could pick up the slack if you happen mm-hmm. to die. If, if I'm being honest, I, I don't think it's fair to the child. Not, yeah. not not that situation. Dad's not there. You'll never get to meet your dad. I mean, who wants to live a life that way? She's 62. It, it, it doesn't feel fair to the child. Yeah, like I can understand in this, like, I mean, her husband just passed. Like, I feel like this is part of the grieving process for her. But I was like... I'm like, is, is this something we got to put in our wills now? Like, I have to put in my will if I die. Sorry, Bart, but you can't go harvesting eggs. <laughs> you can't go, like, up in the, in the hen house, like, plucking out my eggs. Yeah, I think we're going to have to. And I think with her, like, it's the question every parent has to ask themselves. Would I want this child, would I want to be born into the same circumstances that I'm giving my child? So she needs to ask herself that. The Burt Show.